The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Brass Buttons, starring Regis Toomey, Walter Tetley, and Frank Phelan. Maureen O'Hara is your hostess. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. a simple word, a simple act of lifting our minds and hearts to God, a simple word of thanks, an act of love. With these convictions about prayer, in which so many of us believe, Family Theater comes to you each week. It comes with the belief that family prayer can give us the most wonderful, the most powerful help to keep our families together. That's why Family Theater is dedicated to your family, to all families of every race and creed. Your letters during the past weeks and months since Family Theatre began have been a great encouragement for us to continue. It's encouraging to know that listening to Family Theatre has become a habit with with so many, and we sincerely hope that praying together, praying as a family, has also become a habit with you. Yes, it's true. When you gather your family together, when you make daily family prayer a family practice, you will know the joy and happiness and peace of God's wonderful blessing. Yes? Officer Denton is here. Transfer from the 23rd Precinct. Oh, yes, send him in. Denton? Yes, sir. Sit down. I've just been looking at your papers, Denton. According to the records, this is your third transfer this year. That's right. That's a little bit unusual. I just don't get along with all these schoolboy cops that are coming onto the force, that's all. You don't seem to get along with people in general, Denton. There are a few complaints about rough stuff on this record. I want you to know right now that doesn't go in this precinct. What do you do with criminals, play nurse? No, we do our job and we leave punishment to the courts. Besides, not all of the people who complained against you were criminals. I repeat, there'll be none of that here, understand? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. You're a tough cop, but you'll find that I'm pretty tough, too. You got me wrong, Lieutenant. Never mind. Let me tell you why you were transferred over here to the 56th. You won't like this. None of the boys in the 23rd would ride with you anymore. A bunch of young punks. No, they're not, Denton. These young fellows are going to make this the best police force in the state. And I'm not going to let men like you spoil their record. A man shouldn't be pounding a beat at your age. And I don't want to put you on one. But if you can't ride with a side partner and get along with him, if you want to be alone, then I'll lank yank you off the cars. Yes, sir. Sergeant. Yes, Lieutenant Norris. Send Officer Thomas in. Right, sir. Thomas. Is that Ed Thomas, the cop they call the schoolboy hero? The one that started that boys' club? That's right, Denton. Hmm. I heard about him. Publicity hound. That's your version, Denton. Tell him not to waste his time, Lieutenant. I stay away from guys like that. Far away. I'm afraid I'm going to have to trim that distance down to about 18 inches. You're not going to make that guy my side partner. That's my intention. Okay, then I'll put in for another transfer. No, you won't, Denton. Because I'll stop it if I have to go to the commissioner personally. You've got your choice, the car or the beat. You sent for me, sir? Oh, yes, Ed. Come on in. Ed, this is Mac Denton. He just come over from 23. You're going to be side partners. Good. Glad to see you, Denton. How long have you been on the force? Let's see. About eight months, I guess. Oh. Long enough to know how to drive the car? Driving the car will be your job, Denton. What? Me drive? A 14-year man drive a rookie? Unless you'd prefer to walk. All right. I can take a squeeze. I'm not driving a rookie. Assign me a beat. Lieutenant... Couldn't you switch him over with somebody else? I wouldn't want to... Save it, rookie. I can take care of myself. How about it, Lieutenant? Do I get that beat? You certainly do, Denton. Want me for anything else? No. You can go now. XY squared equals 212... If X equals 7, what does... 
Oh, gosh. XY squared equals the... No, quiet, boy, quiet, till I ask Dad if I can keep you. Gee, I hope he likes you. Is that you, Pop? Yeah. I've been waiting for you. What was that noise I heard when I came in? It's a dog, Pop. He followed me home. Look at him. He's a real pup. Come here. Get him out of here. I told you a hundred times not to bring stray mutts home, didn't I? This ain't the dog pound. Yeah, but Pop, he followed me. I could keep him. Get rid of him. What's that junk all over the table? Well, that's my homework. Can't you find someplace else to do it? You got the whole house messed up. Pound a beat all day, then come home to something like this... Now, you're going to learn to listen to me. Get that junk clean off the table. Get that mud out of here and make yourself useful. All right, Pop. I'll take... I'll lose the pup. Gee, I... I wish my mom was alive. Come on, Pop. Come on, boy. Where am I going to lose you, Pop? Where am I going to lose you? You ain't got no place to go, have you? I wish I could go with you. Honest, I do, Pop. If you'll just let me try it, Lieutenant, it might work. I don't know, Ed. Denton deserves what he's getting. But he's too old to be pounding a beat. When the bad weather hits, it's going to be hard on him. I don't know. I don't like giving in to him. You know how I feel about it. He's the kind of a cop that makes some pretty decent people think they hate all cops. I don't like that. But you wouldn't be giving in, Lieutenant. Look, I'll tell him that I need an old-timer with me, somebody who knows the ropes. I'll say that I made a special request for him. It'll flatter him and at the same time give him a chance to back down without making him feel that he's been beaten. Okay, Ed, okay. His tour checked in just a little while ago. Maybe you can catch him in the locker room. I think you're sticking your neck out for trouble, though. Don't blame me if you have to come back in a week and ask me to take him off. Don't worry, sir. I'll ask him right now. Denton. Hey, Denton. Yeah? Oh, it's you. Mac, I want you to do me a favor. Like what? Well, my side partner's kind of new on the job, see? And I don't think we should work together. He should be with one of the older fellows, and, well, so should I. So why tell me? I ain't the police commissioner. I don't run the department. Well, I thought maybe I could ask the lieutenant to change us around, put Jackson with somebody else, and make us side partners, you and me. How's about it? Why? Are you flopping on the job? Is that it? Well, things come up. I don't always know all the answers. And you need somebody to tie your hair ribbon, huh? Well, not me. Besides, the lieutenant wouldn't go for it. I already asked him, Mac. He says it's okay if it's all right with you. Yeah? Well, I'll think about it. I don't like riding around with a wild kid at the wheel. It, it makes me nervous. Well, you could drive, Mac. I think that could be fixed. Yeah? Well, okay, then. Swell. This will be a better shift for you. What do you mean? Well, the hours. You'll have more time to spend with your kid. That's my worry. I'm taking care of my kid. You take care of your business, and I'll take care of mine. Car 19, car 19, Maple and Derby Drive, collision, Maple and Derby Drive, code 3... Out of accidents tonight on these wet streets. That's a good thing that's all there is with this rookie police force. In the old days, things were rough. They kept us busy. You don't think maybe people are getting a little bit better? Ah, uh, pampering never made anybody better. A lug's a lug, and you're not going to change him by patting him on the back or putting him in a boys' club. Car 27, car 27, 212 Redmond Avenue, Prowler now. 212 Redmond Avenue, Prowler now. Two. There you are, Prowler. Now, if that guy only knew how to play ping pong or belong to a boys' club... I don't know what you've got against boys' clubs. Okay. I got you figured out from the start. Personally, I got nothing against you, but all this malarkey stuff... Malarkey? Yeah. It's like this. You come into the cops. You got big sounding words. You talk about social benefit stuff. You make a big toot before the commissioner. You got class. You got a college degree. (laughs) Boom, you're a sergeant. Boom, you're a lieutenant. You guys make me sick. You resent that, don't you, Mac? No, no, I love it. I sweat out 14 years on the force. I know the score. I've been shot at. Yeah, and hit a couple of times, too, and I know what a nightstick's for. So I'm not good enough. I know that Regulation 63 is being broken when I see it, but I can't write it down from memory. So I ain't good enough. (laughs) 
I know. You can use a gun and a nightstick, but when it comes to using your head, that's not in your line, is it? Car 37, car 37, Gray's Market, burglar, burglar inside, caution, code 2. It's about time we got a buzz tonight. Here we go. It's right in the next block. Yeah, lay off the siren. I'll use the car to block the alley in case he makes a break that way. Right. Here we are. Remember, Mac, don't shoot unless you have to. I know my business. There's a door open. Whoever's in there, call out and walk toward this door with your hands up. You're blocked both ways, so be smart. I'll use my flashlight, Mac. Keep me covered. Right. There's nothing over here. Maybe hiding in between counters. You take the other aisle with your light. No, there's nothing behind these. Take a look in the refrigerator. First, take a look behind those packing cases over there. There he goes. Stop! You pushed me. You ruined my shot. Hurry up. Put your gun away. Don't shoot, mister. Please. Please, mister. All right, kid. Come on out and turn your face to the wall. You got him? Yeah, better give him a frisk. What's the matter, Mac? That, uh... That sweater. Turn around, kid. Turn around! You know him, Mac? Yeah. Yeah, I know him. He's... He's my kid. (laughs) Why don't you stop crying, Jimmy? It won't help now. You know, there's a lot to think of. Why does my father come to see me? He doesn't even come to see me. Well, it isn't pleasant for him to see in the detention home. You know, it might only make both of you feel worse. Don't you think it might be better to wait until you get out of here and then you can meet at home without feeling so bad? That isn't why he doesn't come. I know he's mad at me. He thinks I'm no good. Oh, no. It takes longer than 13 years for a boy to get to be no good, Jimmy. People get over mistakes, you know, and other people forgive you one mistake very quickly when they're sure you don't intend to make it again. My father isn't like that. Oh, of course he's like that, Jimmy. Now, you just be patient and wait and see. The probation officer will see him soon, and then you'll be free to go home, and all this will be forgotten. Will you... Will you come and see me again? Sure, Jimmy. Every day while you're here. And when you get out, there's a friend of yours that wants to see you, too, but he can't come here... Oh, just a pooch. You got him? You got my pup? Sure. And you'll have him back just as soon as the probation officer gets to see your dad. Mr. Denton? Yeah? I'm Mrs. Winter. The probation officer. Oh, come in. I wouldn't be here if it... Well, if it weren't for the unusual circumstances. Yeah, the circumstances. Hmm. You want to ask me some questions? Yes. Is Jimmy an only child, Mr. Denton? Yeah. And his mother, your wife, is dead? Yeah. Hmm. Has the boy ever been in trouble before? I mean, anything that you know of. Oh, not necessarily an arrest. No, and he never will be again. Take my word for that. He's going to toe the line once this is over. I see. How about his outside interests? How does he occupy his time aside from school and his studies? Oh, like any other kid. Yes, but how is that? How should I know? Who knows what kids do when nobody's around watching them? Didn't he ever tell you anything about his interests? No. He never told me much about anything. He's a kid that don't talk much. Can you give me the names of his friends? The ones he spent most of his time with? Oh, I don't know. All kids look alike to me. I see. You don't think he'd get into trouble again if uh, he were put on probation and allowed to come home? I know he won't. Once I get my hands on him again, he's going to be a very smart boy. You've had occasion to chastise him before? Physically, I mean? Oh, I slapped him around a couple of times to keep him in line. But nothing like what he's going to get this time, believe me. I believe you, Mr. Denton. Thank you very much. (laughs) 
I've just been to see your father, Jimmy. I, is he all right? Yes, he's fine. He wants you to come home. I said he wants you to come home. Yes, sir. You want to go home, don't you? Yes, sir. Are you and your father good friends, Jimmy? Yes, sir. He never strikes you, does he? No. No, he never hits me. We, we get along fine. Except maybe... Maybe what? Oh, nothing. I understand your mother was a very wonderful lady. Oh, yes, ma'am. You've missed her a lot. Yes, ma'am. Was your father very fond of her? Oh, yes. I bet the three of you had wonderful times together, didn't you? Yeah. We used to go to the beach when Pop was off from work. And on Sunday, we went to church together. And Mom was always happy on the way from church. She was always sort of happy. Has your father changed much since then? No. You wouldn't be afraid to go home to him, Jimmy? No. You aren't afraid he might punish you? No, I told you. No, he never hits me. Don't you say he does. Don't you say anything about my father. People don't have to know. Is Mr. Mac Denton in the court? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Denton, will you please step up here before the bench? You are the father of the accused, James Denton? Yes, sir. Uh, Your Honor. I've been reading the probation report in this case, and while the story of an irresponsible parent is not a new one, it's been especially disturbing in this instance since you've had every possible opportunity to conduct yourself differently. I've always given my boy everything he needed. He had no right to go stealing. And... Why did he steal, Mr. Denton? Because you refused him the simple privilege of having a pet, a small animal. Oh, so that's why he stole. Because I didn't let him have a dog, huh? Strangely enough, the answer is yes. Did you ever attempt to find out why your son entered four different stores and what it was he attempted to steal? No, I didn't. Would it surprise you to know that he was after a simple thing like dog food to feed the starving animal? Dog food, Officer Denton. You had that boy so terrified, he was afraid to take even the scraps from your own table. How do you know that? Is that what he says? Do you take the word of a kid caught stealing? We take his word for it because, from all indications, the child is almost completely without desire to lie. He's my kid. And when I get him home, I'll handle him. Yes, he may be your child, but it's the opinion of this court that you have been anything but a father to the boy. I'll withhold any verdict in this case until a solution occurs which will serve the best interests of the child. Until his custody is delegated to some fit person, he shall remain a ward of the juvenile court. Here is your visitor, Jimmy. Oh, boy, Egg, I'm glad to see you. Hi, young fella. Stay as long as you like, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mrs. Winters. Jimmy, Mrs. Winters told me that you have a picture of your mom. Yeah, it's all three of us. Me and Pop, too. It's all I've got. The only one. Mm-hmm. When was it taken? Well, just before... Well, a few years ago. Well, we were coming from church one Sunday, and there was a man on the street with a camera taking pictures... Pop had a new suit. I think it was Easter. And Mom wanted him to get in the picture, but he wouldn't do it alone. <laughs> Jimmy, would you let me borrow that picture? I promise you, nothing will happen to it. Well, well okay. Only maybe I can't see it so good. It, it's all full of cracks where it's been in my pocket. But my mother's face is good. Your mother's face is beautiful, Jimmy. afternoon, Mac. Yeah. Kind of a day makes you wish you had a family and a nice house to be in. Then you could sit there and read a paper and wish it would rain so you could hear it outside and feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Kind of thought you'd jump at me for that one and call me one of those poetry guys. Uh, I guess I'm getting used to you. You don't mean no harm. You're crazy, but you don't mean no harm. <laughs> you know, Mac, I can say the same about you. I don't think you mean any harm either. You just like to talk. You were looking at something in your wallet when we were reading. What was it? 
No, nothing. Looked like a picture. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a picture. I wonder where it could have... Could have uh, what? I don't know where it come from. There was only one of them, and I found it in my locker. I didn't know I had it. I thought, when I was sure the kid had it, I'd give it to him. What kind of a picture is it? Well, just a sidewalk picture. Who's in it? Well, my wife, the kid, me, the three of us. Come out pretty good, too. Here, pull up, and I'll show it to you. She was a beautiful woman, Denton. Yeah. She's bent over a little because she's holding the kid's hand. It's a swell picture, all right. Yeah. You look at her, the way she's there, you wouldn't think she was going to pass out of the picture in a couple of months, would you? No, she looks fine here. Yeah, she didn't last long. I did everything I could. Put her in a good hospital. Had a nurse with her practically all the time. She never complained. Tried to smile it off. You know how some women are. Yeah, I know. I almost went nuts that last week. The week before she passed out. I guess I must have spent half the time in that chapel in the hospital. <laughs> chapel. Did you ever get down on your knees and pray for something? I mean, really pray? Sure, I've done it. For three solid hours that afternoon when she was upstairs, losing her breath in the oxygen chunt. I'm downstairs, praying. It didn't work. Waste of time. I wouldn't say that, Mac. Yeah, sure, I know. You're supposed to grin and bear it. You see your wife practically crucified on a hospital bed, and you're supposed to grin and bear it. Oh, I don't know. Things ain't been the same. I think I understand, Mac. I haven't put a foot inside a church since, well, not since after she went out of the picture like that. Mac? Yeah? Look, maybe I'm the last guy I want to talk like this, but, well, there's a lot of things I can't figure out about life myself. Yeah? But about people passing out of the picture, it's... Well, hey, look over there across the street by the curb. See those sparrows? Sparrows? Yeah, now it says somewhere in the Bible Oh, that... yeah, sure, I know. God's supposed to count the sparrows, is that it? Right, man. And not one of those sparrows falls without God knowing about it. Right again. That's just what it says. Just ordinary sparrows. So what? Well, your wife, Mac, you can't say she just passed out of the picture. No? No, she's still there in the picture. Maybe it's a little cracked, dirty, hard to make out, but she's still in the picture, Mac, and she's holding the kid's hand. Okay, Lieutenant. Maybe it wasn't strictly according to regulations, leaving the car like that. But we parked for a minute outside the church. Mac, he goes up the steps and walks inside. It looked kind of funny seeing the big guy on his knees. Sweat was pouring off of him, his hands twisting. You know the sunshine where it came through the windows was shining real bright on his brass buttons. Yes, yeah, Sergeant. Denton is here now, Lieutenant. Okay, send him in. You wanted to see me? Yes, Denton. What's this new angle you got? You asked to be transferred to a beat? That's right. Maple Avenue to 3rd? Yeah. Why Maple Avenue to 3rd? Well, it's, uh... Kind of close to your own neighborhood. Is that the reason, Denton? What's the difference? Can I patrol my own neighborhood? Maybe you'd like to keep a special eye on that kid of yours when and if they release him. Sure. That's it. That's exactly it. Don't see what difference it makes to you. He's my kid. I got a right to look after him. For an ordinary flatfoot, you're getting kind of paternal, aren't you? Ordinary flatfoot, huh? Listen, you. I've got a kid. I've raised a kid, and you're trying to tell well, me... Captain, that... I've got a couple of witnesses. Character witnesses in that room. Maybe you'd like to hear what they say about you. Go ahead. Bring them in. If you think you're going to railroad me, you've got a... Sergeant! Yes, Lieutenant. It's time to let them in. Okay, Lieutenant. Coming right in. Pop! It's me! Why? Why, Jimmy! <laughs> and the pooch! Hi, Mac. And you, Ed! My kid, he's here! My kid! Jimmy! Ouch, Pop! You're squeezing! The brass buttons hurt!
You know, home isn't just a house or four walls or a room. Home means understanding, affection, and love. It takes all these to make a house a home. It means mother and father and children living together and playing together. Yes, and praying together. These are the things that bring harmony and happiness into a house. And when you come right down to it, children reflect the spirit of a home. If there are misunderstandings and quarrels, it's the children who suffer most. On the other hand, mothers and fathers who are companions to their children, who talk with them, sympathize with them, these are the parents who make home life's most beautiful memory. And the best memory our children can carry through life is the memory of a God-respecting, God-loving, prayerful home. This is why, week after week, we say, pray together as a family. Oh, don't be shy or embarrassed about gathering your family together to pray, because the example of parents speaking their faith and trust in God, offering their thanks to God, asking his help in difficulties, will always be an inspiration to your children. So pray together as a family, and you will be together in understanding and harmony, because a family that prays together stays together. night, I'd like to thank Regis Toomey for his performance as Mac Denton, Frank Phelan for his portrayal of Ed, and Walter, Walter Tetley for his performance as Jimmy. Our thanks also to Joel Murcott for writing tonight's play, and to Max Tare for his music. Nell Williamson directed, and John Ryder produced the program. Others who appeared in our play tonight were Griff Barnett, Mary Kent, Jim Hayward, and Charlie Seal. Next week, our family theater stars will be Jimmy Gleason, Edgar Barrier, and Natalie Wood in Descent into Paradise. This is Maureen O'Hara saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need, and by the actors and technicians in the motion picture and radio industries. The program is heard overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Services. Tony Lofano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.